and I know this is an old saying, we've all heard it, but I'd rather mess up doing something for the Lord than to get everything right for the devil. Amen. Uh, I would rather at least try uh, to the glory of God than to sit on the seat of do nothing for the devil. Amen. Uh, but take your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter number 16. Uh, Luke chapter 16 this evening. And uh, as we look in uh, at this thought of biblical stewardship, and uh, it's, I guess, maybe a little different, um, a little di in a little different light. A lot of times when you hear a pastor or preacher or Sunday school teacher, just anybody in general, uh, begin to talk about stewardship, we all the time think that it's just money, involving money, and that is an aspect of it. But we're going to read here uh, the parable of the unjust steward. And then uh, tonight will not be long. Uh, Brother Greg come to me and he asked me after service this morning. He said, Preacher, you feeling okay? I thought about it for a second. And I thought, well, yeah, I feel fine. I didn't know if I sounded bad or if I was looking bad or, or what. And he said, well, we're out by 1210. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What a blessing, what a blessing. I'm just aggravating Brother Greg, but uh, I know we're sort of short this morning. Uh, but I got an early start, amen. We got an early start this morning, and we won't be very long this evening, but God has burdened my heart on, on this, this thought of biblical stewardship or, or stewarding life. And uh, I believe there's some great principles that we can find in the scriptures that will help us not only uh, in the uh, area of our finances, but also in other areas we find throughout the scriptures where I believe that it is required of us to be stewards. But we're going to read here chapter number 16, the book of Luke, verse number 1. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do for my Lord take the way from me the stewardship? I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of wool. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then said he to another, How much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write fourscore. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for he will either hate, he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Anytime this verse or these verses have been read, the question has always come up, what is mammon? Mammon, we could simply in modern day terminology render it down to the world. No man can serve God and the world at the same time. For he will either love the one and hate the other, or hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and the world. In other words, you can't have two masters. But 
Stewardship or stewards, uh, biblically speaking, are persons that are placed in charge of another's resources or riches. It was a prominent position back in what we would call biblical days. There was many stewards back in this day and time. It was an occupation. It was a profession. And when people of great riches or people that had great uh, resources or great wealth, uh, uh, they did not want to be responsible for the giving out, the bringing in of the finances that was uh, uh, occurred to them. So they would hire somebody uh, to be a steward. A lot of times we call them a lot of professional athletes and uh, a lot of professional people in our days, we would call them accountants. They hire themselves an accountant, somebody to oversee their finances. And there are some people in this world I have read about that they have so much wealth that they have to go ask permission of whether or not they can spend. I'm talking about personal. If I had so much money that I had to go ask permission, Brother Bill, of whether or not I could spend it, I believe I've got too much money. But we understand that a steward is a person that possesses a great responsibility to oversee somebody else's goods or somebody else's wealth. They're entrusted to give and receive of another's resources. And I want to remind you as it relates to you and I this evening... The Bible says this, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And we find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 28, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. In other words, what Paul is saying is everything that we have belongs to God. And I do mean everything that we have, whether it be monetary, uh, whether it be our money that's in the bank, whether it be the home that we live in, whether it be the church that we attend, I'm talking about the building, everything that we see around us is the Lord's. Uh, the Bible also tells us that every good and perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. We talked about that Last Sunday, we understand that we have nothing uh, lest it be given to us from above. Uh, everything that we are, everything that we have, everything that we ever will be, or anything that we ever possess, uh, it will come from uh, God. Uh, uh, so in other words, it all belongs to the Lord, including you. Amen. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, the Bible tells us that the body is the temple where the Lord dwells. We all understand that this evening, that the body is the temple. Ye are not your own. Ye've been bought with a price. What is the price that he paid to purchase you and I? It was his own blood uh, that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Uh, so there is nothing in us, around us, or a part of us that is ours. Everything that we have uh, and everything that we are belongs to the Lord. Amen. And so with that being in mind, if everything is God's, everything belongs to Him, he has given us the responsibility to tend to some of His things and to tend to some of the areas that He's uh, ordained in our lives. And so, in other words, we, we're, we're stewards. Uh, whether or not we like to admit it or we realize it, all of us are stewards. The four areas that I find throughout the scriptures, and I'm just talking, these are basic, elementary. Uh, I didn't listen. I just had to sit down and pray about this. I'm sure there's men that are authorities on stewardship and biblical stewardship. There's men out there that has a lot more knowledge than what I do. But just in my own time of prayer and study and meditation, I find four areas in our lives where we are called to be stewards. And the first area that I find is we are to be stewards of our faith. 
The Bible tells us very simply put about faith that there is given unto every man a, a measure of faith. Uh, uh, faith is been, has been given to us from God. It's by God and we possess it because of the goodness of God. Uh, and uh, it's up to you and I how we steward that faith. Uh, oh, there was a day in time where I come to the knowledge of my sin. I, I come to the realization that I was a sinner. Uh, and that faith that was given me, I exercised it and gave that faith back to the Lord. I exercised that faith to the saving of my soul for the Bible said for by grace through faith are in that not of yourselves it is the gift of God lest any man should boast we understand that we're not saved by our own righteous works but we're saved by grace through faith and that faith came from God uh, that faith was a gift to us. It belonged to him, but he let us borrow that faith, to use that faith, to exercise that faith and, uh, in, 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 in salvation. But then we understand that the Bible tells us that uh, he laid a foundation. Once we're saved, we're to take heed how we build on that foundation. The Bible warns those of us that would build upon that foundation a foundation, wood, hay, and stubble. Because one of these days uh, our works shall be made manifest, for they shall be tried by fire of what sort they are, whether they be wood, hay, or stubble, or whether they be uh, precious stones, something that's going to last. And so our faith, we understand that our faith is not necessarily just the exercising and salvation, but our faith is just our walk with the Lord. They was somebody said one time, look your neighbor in the eye and poke them therein and tell them we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And that's what the Bible teaches us as a child of God. We walk by faith. Whatever is not of faith, the Bible tells us, is sin. So our faith, God has made our Christianity possible. Every aspect, whether it be our salvation or whether it be our service, we are here this evening because of Him. We're not here because of us. We're not saved because of us. We're saved because of Him. If you've been called to preach, Brother Terry, Brother Scott, myself, and uh, that calling, I didn't wake up one day, roll out of the bed, and think, man, I want to preach the gospel. No, 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 no. I had a lot of other plans. I had a lot of things on my to-do list, but preaching and pastoring just was not one of them, especially at 15 years old. I was called to preach at 15, and I surrendered at 16, uh, exactly 16 days after my 16th birthday. Now, I don't know what the biblical number for 16 is, but I'm sure uh, it has something to do with, 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 with something other in the Bible. Amen? Amen. Smile, laugh. I'm trying to get you to laugh. And so uh, at 16 years old, preaching was the last thing I wanted to do. But then when I surrendered, that calling came from God. So then, Brother Bill, what I found was, what I found was when God called me to preach and I surrendered, uh, when I got up that Sunday evening to uh, tell the church, I didn't know how you're supposed to, you know, really get surrendered to preach. I didn't know. And so I believe I might have told this story before. On the, I was standing on this side of the little church where I grew up in, and, and I knew God had been dealing with me, and I was miserable. I mean, I was fighting it, and I knew what God wanted me to do. I just didn't want to surrender. I did not want to. And I, be real honest with you, I'm kind of fearful of men that say, you know, they want to. There's got to be a Holy Ghost unction in order to preach the gospel. And so... I'm standing over there and I'm wondering, well, how in the world am I going to tell the church? Well, the pastor asked, same thing I asked, all hearts and minds clear. I didn't say a word. I just walked up behind the pulpit and the pastor just kind of walked over. You know, I just kind of moved him out of the way and no doubt everybody in the church house probably thought, Brother Logan, he's finally snapped and he's lost it. Because I had never, Brother Bill, I had never testified in church. I had never said a word in church. I, I hadn't done anything in church other than just show up and sit on a pew. Uh, but I knew that God had called me to preach. 
And so I got up there that night and I stood behind the pulpit and I'd never really cried in church. Man, I started bawling. And I was looking down at the ground and I was just crying and God spoke to my heart. Now, it wasn't an audible voice, but I just knew that God said, well, you've come too far now. Because I was standing up there, I don't know if I was crying because I was spiritual or crying because I had done come too far. But either way, I looked at the church and I said, God's called me to preach. And everybody in the church just kind of got in with me and started crying. Dad, man, he run up, hugged my neck, said, I'm so proud of you, son. I love you, son. And uh, then Wednesday, then the pastor looked over at me and said, all right, be ready to preach Wednesday night. Amen. <laughs> be ready to preach Wednesday night. And so uh, I went home, and, 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 and then I realized that, man, my salvation's not because of me. My call to preach ain't because of me. And here I am, I'm surrendered now, I'm going to preach. And, and then I realized that it's going to take God if I'm ever going to say anything that's ever going to make an impact. And so ever since then, what I'm trying to get us to understand is our faith. We're to be good stewards of our faith. God's blessed us. God's blessed us with a good church. God's blessed us with a good church family. And so there's priorities that we have to set in place as it relates to our faith. There's time when you need to steward your prayer time. You need to be good stewards of your Bible reading time. So we find the first area is that of faith. Secondly, uh, God ordained the family. Do you know that? The book of Genesis, God ordained the family. And I know where I'm at tonight, and I'm not, listen, I'm not for beating a dead horse, but we all understand that God created Adam and Eve. And we understand that that's the only basis of a biblical marriage is between a man and a woman. And God said that it was not good for man to be alone. Some of you ladies are to say amen right there. Amen. Y'all ever left your husband alone? And God looked down and said, man, it ain't good for man that he should be alone. I don't know what Adam was doing that day. But no doubt it was something that's going to get him hurt. Amen. <laughs> and so God looked down and said, man alive, Adam. Yeah, I can't leave you by yourself. So he made a help meet for it. Didn't say a help mate, but said a help meet for him. And uh, so God ordained the family, marriage. It, and, and the Bible said that man shall leave his mother and his father and shall cleave unto his wife. Amen. So we find that God has ordained uh, the family. And we're to be good stewards of our family. And in stewarding our family, and these are things that we will... All, these four areas is what I'm going to preach on for the next four weeks on Sunday night. So make a note of it. And men, don't lay out on me when I get on the family, okay? Hey Amen. That's going to be week number two. Next week, first, we're going to talk about faith. Then we're going to talk about the family. But there's some areas in our lives where uh, we ought to be good stewards when it comes to our family. We find that it is an area uh, that God has made us stewards is our finances. Bible teaches you and I uh, some things, some principles throughout the Scripture. The Bible tells us, Owe no man anything. When I was being ordained, Brother Bill, they, I don't know that my pastor, he, he, he pretty, he's super nice, and he, and he loves you. I mean, he loves people. But that day I had my doubts. <laughs> Amen. I went in there and they got me back and thank God they did that question. And y'all, who's y'all ever been in an ordination service? Anybody ever been in an ordination service? A lot of times, you know, them old timers where I was growing up, they they had to have that questioning just out in front of everybody. Then they'd open the floor and let everybody. And I'm 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 used to that. I know how that goes. But my pastor, he got me back there with the presbytery and all them men that sat on the presbytery and they got me back there and and uh, Amanda was in there with us to start with, and Brother Sam looked at Amanda and said, uh, and said, Amanda, are you saved? Amanda said, yeah. Brother Sam said, all right, you're done. You can go. <laughs> and uh, so she got up, she left, she was done. And Brother Bill, my pastor commenced 
to asking me things that I never dreamed he would ask me. I'm talking about, hey, they wrote me through the cold. When it talks about being examined, they examined me. And we got down there, and, and, and Brother Sam asked me an interesting question. Uh, one question that I answered very honestly. He said, uh, Brother Logan, the Bible tells us, and he went through a few verses, but he, he quoted that verse, Oh, no man, anything. And he looked at me and said, Do you owe anybody money? Well, in my mind, I thought, Dear Lord. I said, I don't know. I don't believe I owe any man anything, but there's a lot of banking institutions that that has my note and my name. And Brother Sam and I thought, man, this is going to be it. He ain't going to he ain't going to agree to ordain me. I thought this is we're done. And all them preachers standing there looking at me, you know, sitting there looking at me. I thought, man, alive, this is awful. And Brother Sam looked over at me with a real stern face, and he said, the Bible said, man, not bank. Thank God. But there's some principles throughout the scriptures where we are to be good stewards of our finances. Every dime that's in your bank account this evening belongs to the Lord. Every dime that you'll make this week is the Lord's. Everything you have, as we've already said, and everything that's been given to you is the Lord's. And then we find that I, I find in the scriptures, not only are we to be good stewards with our faith, with our family, with our finances, but also with our future. I believe it's good for people to be prepared. What did Jeremiah say? Jeremiah told the nation of Israel that God wanted to give them an expected end. In other words... I believe in order to be good stewards for the glory of God, we ought to prepare for our future. I understand this evening that we don't know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I believe spiritually we ought to be prepared. And so I find through the scriptures that there's areas, and those are four areas that I find. You might have read books where men have seven areas or five areas or 45 areas. Some men, I don't, they just make stuff up for uh, points to preach. But these were the four that I found. So in the, in the preceding weeks to come on Sunday nights, we're going to look at how we are to be good stewards of our faith, our family, our finances, and our future. And we call that stewarding life. But all four of these areas of being a biblical steward can be broken down, I believe, into three groups, scripturally speaking. And we're going to get back to Luke 16 in just a minute in, in closing. But and if, if we're to be good stewards, each one of these areas, I find, it involves our time. The Bible tells us this, Ephesians 5, 16, and 17, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil, wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. When it comes to our faith, our family, finances, and future, there's an aspect where we have to be aware that the time that has been allotted unto us is not our own, but we are on borrowed time. It is the Lord's. God has blessed us each day that we live. The Bible tells us, Brother Bill, that the very breath inside of our lungs is a blessing from the Lord. And each day that we're able to get up and to face another day, each moment that passes by, it is a gift from God. It is given to us by the sovereign and we are to steward our time wisely. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 16, we look at the, the, uh, what, what the Bible calls the unjust steward. They were some men that had come to his master and come to the one that he worked for and said, Look here, your steward is wasting your goods. How many of us, if God were to look into our lives, would say, You're wasting my time? That's a sobering thought this evening. How many, of, how many of us, if God were to look, look in on us and take inventory of the time and how we spend it and how we use it, would God look down at us and say, you're wasting 
มาท่า time time is a valuable thing time uh, you and I as the Bible teaches are redeeming the time that word redeeming the time it means to make the most of make the most of time God knows when we'll draw our last breath we don't And we should be living each day as though it is our last. And so we'll look as it relates to our faith and family and finances and future, our time. How how do we steward time? Number two, our talents. Now, talent in the scriptures that's not talking about that is financial. I say it like that. That is monetary. We understand that uh, in our modern day. Terminology in our modern day vernacular, we 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 hear the word talent. We think you know something that somebody something some somebody's good at. You know, like he's a talented painter or he's a talented singer. He's a talented whatever it is. Talent. That's what we often. But the biblical usage of the word is monetary, money, finances. Now here's something to think about. Second Corinthians nine, six through eight. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able, and God is able. To make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Paul's telling the church at Corinth, he's talking about you know their giving. He's talking about them giving financially to the ministry. But in the latter part of those verses, he says, if you will. Steward your talents right; it will help you to have all sufficiency in all things. He also goes on to say that you may abound to every good work. So, if we are good stewards with our time and our talents, I find in the scriptures that God will take care of the needs that we have. Amen. And He'll cause us to abound unto every good work. And lastly, when it comes to being a biblical steward and stewarding life, the way that God would have us to, there's a trust aspect. I believe we'd all say Amen to the fact that sometimes it is hard to trust God. It could be our time. It could be our talent. But trust is a very important aspect of this thing. The Bible says, Proverbs three five, five through six says, "Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path." You've heard that quoted before, and I've heard that quoted before. I've read that before. I've preached on that before. But it's interesting to note that on down at verse number nine, three verses down below six, it says this: "Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine." So if the Bible says. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. We trust the Lord with our souls. We trust the Lord with our salvation. We trust the Lord to uh, keep us sealed under the day of redemption. We trust that uh, God's not ever going to leave us nor forsake us. We trust that He's able uh, to keep that which we've committed unto Him against that day. We trust that He's able to save. We trust that. He's able to supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory, and we're able to trust the Lord for all of those things. But when it comes to areas of our life where we're to be good stewards, 
we sometimes fail to trust him. So Proverbs, Solomon says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding. Then just a few verses, Honor the Lord with, all, with, with thy substance. And you and I, we are to be, if we are to be good stewards, we have to learn to trust the Lord. We have to, and listen, I'm not talking about being silly or, to being, or, or being foolish, but I am talking about trusting the Lord. And as we go through these messages, we'll, you'll find where these areas uh, of uh, biblical stewardship apply to our faith, family, and finances in the future. But why is it that God desires for you and I, and what are the benefits of being good stewards or stewarding life the way that God would have us to steward life. We find this Luke 16, and I'll be fast, and I'm just going to mention these and move on, but when we become good stewards of the things that God has given us, as we said in opening up, being a steward is somebody that has oversight of another man's resources in other words, a steward is given the responsibility to tend to and to take care of the resources that belong to somebody else. And God's given us some things and allowed us to be stewards of what is His. And if we're to be good stewards, or the benefits of being a good steward, is number one, it helps us to develop a determined purpose in life. Y'all ever heard of what you know, they call free thinkers. Or the old saying is, flying by the seat of your pants, living with absolutely no purpose. Y'all ever met people that way? Y'all ever met church people that kind of have that same mentality? That it seems like they have no, no determined purpose. There's no definite direction. There's no determined direction for their life. They just come and go, and they are what the Scripture says. They are tossed about with every wind of doctrine. But when you and I, we take our faith into consideration and our families and our finances and our future, and we begin to steward these areas of our life the way that God de desires us to steward them, we'll find that it will develop a determined purpose. And I believe we ought to live with a purpose. I believe every day we ought to try to determine the goals for the day. What do we want to accomplish? What are some areas in our life that we want to see God do a work? Where are, what are some areas in our life where we want to see God work? And what are some areas in our life where we want to, I guess what you'd call, uh, go on? Hebrews chapter number 6, let us go on unto perfection not laying again a foundation of dead works from repentance. See, too many of us, we dwell in the kiddie pool because we're living with no purpose. And God desires us to, if, we, if we're good stewards, we'll live with a purpose. This young man or this man, this steward, the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods and he called him and said unto him, How is it that, that I hear this? Have given account of thy stewardship for thou mayest be no longer steward. This man, as I look at this in my mind, I picture a steward that uh, at one point in time in his life he was probably living with a determined purpose to please his master and to uh, fulfill his duty and role as a steward, but now he's just flying by the seat of his pants and wasting away and squandering that which is not his own. So we find that it'll give us a determined purpose. And then it'll help us de to develop a definitive program for our lives. Say, so what do you mean, preacher? Well... When you become a good steward of your time, your talents, and you trust the Lord, as it relates to, say, your family, you'll begin to make time to be the husband that God desires you to be. When you determine to be a good steward, ladies, it'll help you to be the wife that God desires you to be. And you know there's descriptions for both the husband and the wife throughout the Word of God on how we are to be. It'll help children 
be the children that God desires for you to be. It'll help parents be the parents that God desires for you to be. When we become biblical stewards of what God has blessed us with, it will help us to develop a definitive program for our life. This man was a steward. And I want you to notice what he says. He says at the latter part of verse number 3, he, oh, I'll read the whole verse. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away, me from, taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed. In other words, what he's saying is, I don't know any other trade. I can't go out and get a job digging. I ain't never dug a day in my life. And he said, I'm too, I, I'm too ashamed to go out on the street corner and beg. All I've ever known is being a steward. This is the program that I have for my life. This is what God has put in my heart to do. And though I've got to this position and place in my life where I've wasted my, my master's goods, I've wasted the rich man's resources, I don't know anything else to do. And what we learn from that is God has a program for our lives. Whether it's to be a good husband, a wife, a good child, a good parent, a good church member. It could be a good deacon, a good preacher, a good layman, a good lay lady, a good Sunday school teacher. God has a program for your life. It's what you're supposed to be doing. But when we fail to steward these areas of our lives will find that our program, what God has set before us, gets messed up. Just an old modern day terminology gets messed up. And lastly, it'll help us uh, develop a definite process. When we look at this unjust steward, as we see this parable develop, as we see what he does, to right his wrong. And then Jesus comes in at the latter part and he begins to say, no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. When we become the stewards that God wants us to be, we'll find ourselves in the place and the position that God wants us to be we'll no longer be spinning our wheels trying to please the world and please God at the same time. We'll no longer try to fit in. We'll just accept the fact that we're saved and we're to stand out. We're to be a peculiar people, a different people. And so in this whole study of stewardship, it helps us to develop a determined purpose for life a definitive program for our life. And we'll see later on the process whereby God brings us to the place where we realize that He is really all that matters. Miss Amanda and these girls, I believe they've sung that song, He is really all that matters. When this thing is over and across death's cold waters, we'll see more clearly that really he is all that matters. Worldly mammon, when we become the stewards that God desires us to be, the world will no longer matter. And so in the coming weeks, we're going to look at those areas in more detail. Our faith, our family, our finances, our future. And how are we to be good stewards of each one of them? I believe it will be beneficial to us. And then... Uh, on Wednesday nights, we are going through the book of Revelation. And uh, so Wednesday night, Lord willing, unless God changes the direction, we'll be uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter number 4, uh, there Wednesday evening. And then Wednesday, I'll have us some printouts. As I said, we're going to do it at the end of service this evening, but I'm going to hold off. And, and uh, I've got some uh, information to plug in and get some people's... Uh, email addresses so that you'll be able to log in 
And really, what I what I have found is is when I was going through there this afternoon and looking, I've got emails for like uh, one or the other spouse. Now, if y'all are all right just having the church directory on one phone, that'll be fine. But if if both husband and wife or both people uh, want to be on there, for example, like Terry and Donna, if they both want to be on there, I need both their emails because that's going to be how you log in to the church directory. Uh, but I'll get some of that information plugged in. I may be reaching out to some of y'all this week and trying to get that uh, finished up. And then what it will allow us to do is, uh, like for Miss Vicki and the bulletin, uh, Miss Diane and the newsletter, uh, we can print out like all of our anniversaries for the year, print out all of our birthdays for the year. And then it, if we want to go back to a paper, uh, paper directory all you got to do just one click and it'll print off a full directory of our church but anyways if all hearts and minds are clear we'll stand and be dismissed in prayer stewarding life biblical stewardship I want you to pray pray as we go through these on Sunday evenings and I pray that God will help us see some areas in our lives where we might need to as as the book of Hebrews says, tighten up our grip on some things. I love you and I appreciate you. Nothing be nothing to be said. Wednesday night business meeting. Don't forget Wednesday night business meeting following service. Amen. Well, go a praying, come a praying. You're at liberty to go. <laughs>